Hello and good morning. My name is Mike Cornell and I'm alongside Coach Ron Lathy and we would both like to welcome each one of you to June and we are excited to study God's Word with each one of you here this morning. And as we get started we have three things we would like for you to consider and the first one is this. What is the difference between concern and worry? And that's a really, really good question all of us need to deal with. And by the way, if you're a note taker, this is a really good spot to get a pen, get a piece of paper, grab your Bible, grab your quarterly, and follow right along with us here this morning. The second one is, why are humans more valuable than other parts of creation? And then finally, when you worry, which do you worry about? What might happen or what might not happen? And today we begin a new quarterly study titled a confident hope and coach here we go last week we finished our study of all the prophets and we spent 12 weeks I believe it was coach mm -hmm. yeah. studying the prophets the title of this week's lesson is called freed from worry and we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 looking at verses 25 through 34 and coach could you get us started with some prayer and just kind of set the stage for us sure let us pray most kind and loving Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we humbly bow before you at this time. Just uh, thank you, Lord, for the blessings that you give us, giving us an opportunity to come out and worship in your house this morning. And Lord, just to study your word. Lord, we just thank you for all the blessings you give us each day. And, and uh, the greatest blessing of all is, is our salvation through your Son. Lord, as, uh, as we start to study our lesson today, we don't want to forget those who can't be here for whatever reason. Lord, we have many people still in hospitals and nursing homes and homebound, Lord, that would love to be here and just cannot. So, Lord, we just ask for you to please be with them and, and bless them wherever they might be. Lord, as we open your word this morning, we just pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts uh, and Lord, as we study this very valuable lesson on how we can, uh, can cut down on our worries and anxieties just simply by trusting you, or we just pray that this will make, uh, uh, will let someone understand that you don't have to be uh, somebody that worries about everything because God, you are in control. We just have to give you that control of our lives. Lord, we just ask you again to open our hearts and minds and, and, and may we be able to understand what's being given to us today. This we ask your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, Mike, what, uh, the, the lesson kind of starts us off with, with how important this is because I really don't know anybody that doesn't worry too much. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and oftentimes we, we find out that... Uh, uh, you know, when it says here, free from worry, that sounds pretty good to me. I don't know about you, but um, this is actually part or kind of the ending of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And uh, in chapter 5 of Matthew, it began, and we saw the Beatitudes, and, and it went a little further into, into uh, a section they, they call the similitudes. And now we're kind of more to where Jesus is just simply giving advice of, to his disciples, as well as the people, as to how they can live here on earth and, and live a life that's productive, and, and they don't have to worry about things like, like we often do. Uh, we know that he had <clears throat> started his ministry around the Sea of Galilee, and that's where we believe that the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount took place, one of the little mountains around the Sea of Galilee there. And we know as he went through Galilee and was preaching and teaching and, and uh, uh, healing the sick, and he was uh, healing the, those that had been demon-possessed, his, obviously his popularity grew and grew and grew, as did the crowds that started following him. So we're, we know that Jesus is, is kind of into his, his messages now and drawing people to him uh, by, by the hundreds, I'm sure. So as we look at this, to, uh, in his verses previous to this, he has done some things like he rebuked uh, what we refer to as vain religion, like, you know, just going through the motion type religion. Uh, he gave instructions on how to pray. Uh, he taught about instead of uh, 
trying to get your keep get your treasures down here on earth, but store your treasures rather in heaven. And that kind of sets the basis of what is this message that we're going to talk about is today. And uh, we know that a lot of people worry. Uh, I read, read where one, one husband had asked his wife, said, why do you worry so much when it doesn't do any good? And she said, oh, it does good because 90% of what I worry about never happens. So uh, and we think a lot of us are like that in, in, in many ways. Uh, you know, so worry is one of those things we all know about it. And uh, I did come, on, come upon an interesting statistic uh, this was done, to supposedly, I believe, by Duke University talking about people and what they worried about. And they said that a person's anxiety is focused on, first of all, 40% of things that never happen, uh, 30% of the things that are in the past they can't do anything about, um, and then uh, 12% of it the, about criticism by other people, much of which is not true. And then about 10% about their health, which only gets worse because they're worried. And, and then really only about 8% are really problems that they, they end up facing. So we're, uh, you know, when you worry, you realize that uh, if you stop and think, and hopefully after we go through our lesson today, people will start and th stop and think about what am I really worrying about and why am I worrying? So it's, I hope this will give us some things to think about at least. I really like this topic. I, I think it's something that's relevant to everybody and cause, because it's easy for us to worry about the things we have to deal with every day mm -hmm. in our lives. We have bills to pay. We have children or grandchildren to deal with, deadlines to meet, both at work, both at home, and, and maybe sometimes even at church. And sometimes the busy pace of our lives can be overwhelming when you think Absolutely. about it. And our study this week is, is part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, like Coach mentioned. In this portion of his sermon, Jesus teaches his listeners and us, Coach, not to worry, but to put God's kingdom first and let him take care of things that we are concerned about. And that sets the stage for us. That's right. And we're, we're going to try to talk about how to overcome worry if you're a worry or what you can do to, to overcome that or at least make it less uh, ang anxious as it might be in people's lives today. Yeah. So that we're going to look at Matthew beginning with uh, chapter 6, verse 25. And here we see freedom from worry. And God's word says this. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body. And what you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes so coach in his sermon on the mount jesus taught to people about christian living really through rhetorical questions right yeah these are these are ones that that you may hear someone ask or you may read it read them in the bible or whatever and there are those kind of the questions that really make you think sure you know they, they make you reevaluate things in your own life so one of the things we find about to, to overcome worry, what Jesus is saying here is we need to focus on eternal matters and not these temporary matters while we're here on earth. And, and that's what he's trying to say here. You, you know, don't worry about your life, uh, what you're eating and drinking or what you're wearing because uh, the life is more important than food or clothes. And, uh, you know, we stop and think, you know, there's an awful lot of money made out there in the world on those two things yeah. <laughs> that, uh, uh, that maybe uh, uh, we're thinking too much about those earthly things rather than the heavenly things that Jesus is trying to get us to, to, to focus on. Because he says our riches are in heaven. Well, in, in the prior verse to this, verse 24, he talked about coveting and the danger of living to, to serve both God and material wealth and the danger mm -hmm. that that presents. And I think we would all agree that very often we worry about not having enough money. Uh, when we're short on funds, we tend to worry about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, or what we're going to wear. And this, this particular study really uh, gives some good advice of how to deal with that. Right. And it's also making us realize that, that, uh, uh, Jesus was trying to get the people's focus away from worry and more toward trust in God. Sure. And, and uh, we need to have, have faith 
Uh, and when you stop and think about it, Mike, if God is the one who gave us life, why do we wonder if he can sustain our life, you know, with these basic things? Why do we are we so worried about that? And uh, so there's a, there's just seems like to be a, uh, everybody's running around trying to to fill their desires of the temporal things and not focusing on what really matters in the end. So, Well, that, that really takes us right into that very first question that, that we talked about when we started this morning, Coach, and that is this, and, and this is really a good question. What is the difference between concern and worry? Well, uh, you know, uh, the... There's nothing wrong with uh, certainly b about being concerned. Right. You know, we're all concerned about our families. We're all concerned about different things going, maybe our jobs and so forth. But there's a big difference between being concerned about those things and then taking it home and stewing about it for, for you know, for all evening. Some people can't go to sleep because of the worries. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and I think that we need to understand that. Uh, uh, concern, I think, is usually associated more with caring about other people, and worry is more concerned about me. Yep. Uh, is is one way to maybe maybe look at it or categorize it. I know uh, Paul says in in his writings, he says, apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxious concern for all the churches. So even Paul had concern. He wasn't worried about right. it, but the concern was that his churches that he started were going to flourish and, and reach people for Christ. And he had a constant concern over their welfare. You know, that, that's more where we think about the idea of concern. Uh, and then uh, we should be concerned about our spiritual lives and the lives of others and things like this, but we shouldn't worry about it. And again, we need to learn to trust uh, in God. And because as, as doctors will tell you, as a lot of us already know, worry is detrimental to our, to our health. Yep. Uh, concern is not quite that drastic, but uh, concern, like I said, is more when we have other people involved, you're concerned about them and maybe not so much about yourself. Well, having a concern and having a worry, Coach, are two entirely different things, but if you're not careful, Satan will use those to smear them together mm -hmm. and back and forth to where it all just becomes worry. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really, really careful with that, but there's a key difference between, if you're wondering out there, what, how, do, how do you know? How do you know whether you're just legitimately concerned about something or you've entered the worry column? The key difference is concern motivates to help others, like Coach mentioned a minute ago, with a goal of solving it or to minimize the issue. Whereas worry is something which stems from negative thoughts about the future with assumptions that are driven by fear and anguish. This fear then creates an emotional disturbance and there is no peace right. when you have that kind of worry, Coach. And right. here, here's another really interesting, you could break this down uh, even further with concern and worry, but concern allows one to, to pray and to seek God's will and direction for whatever that issue is. And, but when you worry, it kind of shuts God out. Mm. It, it totally eliminates God in the equation. Well, we, we, as we'll see in our lessons, we go along here. When you worry, you're, you're kind of saying you don't really trust God to handle it. That's right. You know, so then you're putting it back on yourself. Yep. And that takes us to verse 26. And here we see provision for the weak. And it says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So here Jesus gives an example of nature to show mm -hmm. that God cares for his creatures. Right. And, you know, to, I think one of the ways to help overcome worry, and this is something that a lot of people don't realize, especially younger people, uh, and I see this a lot as a, as a teacher still, uh, with in my kids, a lot of people don't realize how valuable they are to God. That, That's a big that, one. That, you know, you're right. They, they don't feel themselves as being having value, and that's one of the key elements of ha of being happy, is feel that you have worth and and value. So one of the ways, as I said, to stop 
worrying is to start realizing just how important you are to God. And we'll kind of cont continue that theme as we go along here. <clears throat> Some people think that verse 26 here is a is really a license to be lazy. Mm -hmm. And that's that's really not what is going on here. Jesus' words are not meant to teach that, that we should be lazy. God does not simply drop food into the birds' mouths. No. The adult birds are constantly busy searching for food, building mm -hmm. nests, and caring for their young. These habits are instinctive, but God is the one who's given them their instincts for self-preservation. What God is really saying here, what Jesus is really saying is, is don't worry about these things. Yeah, don't, don't get it to the point where it's past concern and gone into wor into worry. And yeah, I, you know, I, I see this every day. My wife uh, has a view of a bird's nest on our porch uh, that she watches every spring. The birds come back and and rebuild this nest and raise young ones there. And of course, she gets a lot of uh, pleasure out of watching that. And uh, it. Uh, you know, it, it is, or she's t telling me a lot of times, uh, those mo mother and father <laughs> birds said all they did was just tag team, bringing food back to those uh, babies and, and uh, or building their nest, whichever. But uh, it, you're right as far as it's, it's, uh, it's not saying that you don't have to reap or you have, don't have to try to grow food or go out and work. That's not what it's saying there. Right. It's just saying that God does provide if he takes care of the birds who don't have to do those things how much more will he take care of us and it plays right into that how much we mean to god well and that <clears throat> it takes us right into that second question where you know it really does establish the value that we have to god like what you're talking mm -hmm. about and that question is this why are humans more valuable than other parts of creation yeah and 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 again i I don't want to harp on this this part, but I think it's important because, uh, you know, we know that suicide is really a, at, a, at an epidemic level in our country, sure. and especially with, with younger people. So a lot of that is because of the fact that they have no self-worth and they don't feel like they're worth anything. They're a disappointment to everybody. And, and that's why when we focus on how valuable that God thinks that we are, uh, that kind of brings some of that out in the open where we can talk about it. But uh, humans uh, for, are, are more valuable to God first and foremost is because we were made in His image. That's right. And, and not only that, but we, we have a, God breathed into us not only life but a, a soul, a living soul. And we're made in, that, in the image of God. Uh, and if that's not enough for you, then God went and paid for us. <laughs> by sending his son to die on the cross and shed his blood. So how many of us would be willing to send our children to a, to a cross to, for somebody else, you know, uh, when they had no wrong in themselves? So, you know, the, the animals are not made in the image of God. Uh, they are not called sons and daughters of God like we are. Uh, God, you know, made man his chief and head in all creation. He gave man that. So, uh, you know, when we look at that, when we are recreated through the second birth, God makes us a new creature again in, a, in, a, in the likeness of Christ. So this is not what happens when it comes to animals or any other uh, part of his creation. And, and again, that's why, uh, you know, Evolution is so ridiculous to me is God did only made human beings in his image. And this is not something that happened over millions of years or whatever. So that's, that, does, that doesn't hold water to me at all. But uh, a lot of worry happens because we really don't understand our immense value to God. That's a really, really good point. And, you know, as God's children in his eyes, we are more important than the birds of the air, mm -hmm. and like you said, because we are made in God's image. And image here does not mean a physical likeness. It, it means that man, like God, possesses a personality mm -hmm. and has emotions. Mm -hmm. Man thinks, man feels, and man has a, a will that helps him know right from wrong. 
animals don't know right from wrong. Everything they do is instinct, instinctive, mm-hmm. and the instincts are placed there by God himself. Right. And that takes us to verse 27. And it says, Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And to the comparison with the birds, Coach, Jesus adds the observation that worrying can add nothing to life. Right. There, there's nothing it can do to to enhance your life. In fact, we talked about it shortens, it can shorten your life, and that's proven by the doctors uh, medically. And uh, it has an effect on your heart, your heart rate, and things like that. So that there's no question about that being detrimental to your health. Uh, and as far as you don't um, gain anything, uh, I've heard this, this said many times, why worry when you can trust? Because worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. <laughs> and uh, that's exactly what happens with, with the idea of worry. It doesn't add, he says, you can't add a single hour to your life uh, or uh, anything to, to add here. And, uh, and so why do we do it? You know, it's just our human nature. And without God, it's hard not to worry. Well, it, it, the verse here says a single hour, and what he's talking about is a small unit of measure, mm-hmm. really, when it refers to time. Right. But if you look back at the King James Version, Coach, it talks about a cubit, mm-hmm. which is really a small unit of measure, and mm-hmm. that's how he makes reference to the, the small measure of time. You know, a cubit's 18 inches. Mm-hmm. Uh, but many people do worry about how long they will live and wish that they could add more years to their life. But Jesus declared that worrying about this is futile or worthless. In fact, we know that worry can have the opposite effect. Mm-hmm. It shortens lives like what you said. Yeah. So it, it is really useless. It's a really useless exercise to worry about getting old or, or not getting old. Worrying doesn't change anything. When was the last time, Coach, that you saw a bird with an ulcer? Not None that I know of. <laughs> it just doesn't exist. <laughs> Birds don't worry. They just go uh, about their business. And that takes us to our first practical point. And it says, if God is able to provide for the needs of his creatures, he certainly is able to provide for our physical needs. Yes, we know, you know, we know that God is able to provide for all the animals and, and even the the plants and everything takes care of them and and to to God a lot of this globe is a garden and and he takes care of it uh, we we know that that uh, um, he does we need to not I guess not uh, make light of it that he made it all he owns it all he has it all and he takes care of it all and uh, and so we certainly know that he's able to provide. So why would we think that he could not provide for us? And that's where our lesson is heading here. That what our main point we want to get across: how we can trust that he takes care. You know, when's the last time you worried whether the sun was going to come up the next morning? <laughs> you know, he, he takes care of all these things, and we don't worry about it. So suddenly, why do we worry that he can't fill our needs as humans you know and that's kind of where we're heading with this well some people if if they really don't have something legitimate to worry about they'll cook something up sure because that's just what they do they'll they'll stick something in there to mm-hmm. worry about because that just seems to be their nature yeah but you know wherever you're watching from this morning uh, and if you're alive and you're breathing air worrying is a hard thing to overcome because mm-hmm. everybody has challenges in life you may be watching and you may have a, a physical or health problem. You may have financial problems. You may have relationship issues. You may have uh, any type of a, a challenge in life. But the bottom line is we can trust God with our salvation, but we can't trust him with our daily needs. Yeah, right. That, that's exactly what Jesus is really saying here. God knows us so well. He knows what you need. He knows that we worry and we fear the future. He already knows that. He promises again and again in Scripture that we need to trust Him and know that He will provide for us. So here's how you do it, folks. 
you take it one day at a time. That's the key, and that's what Jesus is really saying here. One day at a time, and more important, trust God. Right. And that takes us to verse 28. And here we see provision for helpless. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. So clothing is necessary for humans. Mm -hmm. For Jesus' audience, clothing was difficult to come by. Yeah, you know, when I was over in Israel, I, you know, I st still didn't see any J.C. Penney's or <laughs> clothing stores over there. You know, even today, there may have been some, but uh, at that point, you couldn't go down to the corner store and buy a suit of clothes or whatever. Whatever you wore, you made. Yep. Uh, and I mean, when you say you made it, it was from scratch. You know, you have to take your the sheep or whatever and get the wool. You had to spin the wool into thread. Then you had to, to weave the thread into cloth and then sew the cloth together. And so it, uh, it was not easily done at that stage. So it was not unusual for, uh, you know, adults to have maybe only one set of clothes. And, and in fact, uh, uh, the, how many clothes you had was often a sign of how well off you were. Uh, you know, so this, uh, what this is telling us here is, or Jesus is saying, uh, why are you worrying about what clothes you wear? Uh, if you look out here, uh, no matter what clothes you do have, they can't compare to the, what you see out there in the meadow or in the grassland with the flowers. Uh, that God is already clothed. Uh, so uh, the flowers, uh, they don't, you know, they, it says they don't labor or spin. God takes care of them. Right. And that's, that, that's just like we talked about the, uh, the animals. Uh, and I read, read a little story not too long ago that talked about a, a construction company was building a road through an area, through this forest, and they came to this one tree that had a bird's nest in it that had young birds that were too young to fly. And uh, so they agreed to bypass this tree until the, the birds were able to fly and, and take care of themselves. So after they uh, were, the man came back and checked out and saw that they were gone. But he found out when he cut the tree down and the nest fell with it, he found a piece of paper in that nest. And in that ne nest was a little piece of paper from Sunday school class. Uh, that was said, God cares for you, uh, you know, and that was a great example to him about God taking care of the birds and the flowers and all that we're saying here. Well, that's a really good illustration. And Jesus is really talking about two things here uh, when he's talking about labor or spinning. Uh, labor speaks of working to the point of weariness as men do when harvesting. And spinning uh, is, is another activity involved in making clothes, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And Jesus noted the flowers don't do either of these things. What's a fl the flowers only have one job, Coach, and that's to grow. And, and God wants us to grow spiritually, daily, just like the flowers grow physically. That's really mm -hmm. our only job as a Christian, and that's all God wants from us. That's right. Same thing that he wants from the flowers. Their job is to grow. Our job is to grow. Yeah. And, and then bloom where you are is the same thing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, let's go on to verse 29. And it says, Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. So Solomon was one of the wealthiest kings on earth when he ruled over Israel. And when, when people the world over came to Solomon to hear about you know, his wise teaching, they regularly brought him rich gifts, mm -hmm. which included clothes and robes and weapons and different things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you know, and obviously we can only imagine, uh, you know, the kind of robes that he wore. Sure. And, uh, of course, we know the his temple or that, that he or his palace where he lived was immaculate and, and it was the, uh, you know, one of the most beautiful buildings anywhere. Uh, spared no expense for that for that palace, and at the same time, <clears throat> for him, like you said, these visiting dignitaries wanted to get on his good side because at that time, early in his career, especially, he was known as the wisest man on, on in the world. So they wanted wanted to hear from him, 
and they would try to bribe him or to uh, get on his good side, and they would bring the best that they had. But again, like uh, like again, we're we're mentioning here, even as maybe as regal and beautiful as his clothing was, and uh, Solomon couldn't hold a candle to the flowers and even the grass and uh, and everything out there in the, in the uh, uh, in nature. So uh, he, even he couldn't top that. Well, <clears throat> the wildflowers carpeting the fields of Palestine mm -hmm. were more gloriously dressed than Solomon ever was or ever could even imagine being. God graciously supplied their brilliant color and texture. And this also has, has a spiritual reference for us, Coach. Jesus is also making a specific, specific reference not only to physical clothing, but to the spiritual clothing that he right. can and will provide for us. Right, yeah, we, he, we get rid of our filthy rags, as they're called, and put on the robes of righteousness. Right. All right, let's go on to verse 30, and here we see provision for small faith. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So, again, Jesus argued for the, the lesser to the greater, the grass of the field lasts only for a season. Yeah, and not only that, but uh, you know, after one season, they use them for fire. Uh, you know, to to because uh, uh, they dry up, of course, and and uh, are easily burned. So he's saying here that uh, even though it only lasts for a season, God still makes it exceptionally beautiful. And uh, and again, you know, if you you see a nice field of wildflowers out there in a, in a meadow or something. Uh, it is hard to find something much more, much more beautiful than that yep. with all the different colors and so forth. And, uh, but eventually those, those blooms all dry up and are eventually used for fire, he says. So, and then, Je you know, Jesus again is showing here, he says, ye of little faith, which is, uh, uh, which is a, uh, statement that he would use quite often whenever his disciples would would kind of complain and, and, and gripe about things not going their way or not having what they felt that they needed. And, and, uh, and then I remember uh, Jesus also told them, if you had the faith of a mustard seed, you could do great miraculous things. And a mustard seed is a very tiny seed. Sure. So uh, uh, that was one of his... Uh, <clears throat> phrases that he used quite often but he's talking about their faith here and he's also talking about our faith if we worry so much it means we don't have our faith in God and and, and we're letting those worries come in and overtake uh, what where we should be trusting God we're letting those worries Satan sneak in there and make us worry to where it's almost like that we don't believe that God can do what he says he can do you know, and so uh, again, it's it's he's it's how little faith we have sometimes. But uh, faith, uh, faith, if you don't make it grow, as he's talking about here, then it it gets stagnant and actually regresses. Uh, you know, we have to work on our faith, and that's why God often get puts us through things to help grow our faith or help to uh, uh, maybe rekindle our faith. So, uh, so yeah, it's, this is, you know, faith is the key thing we're talking about here in God and trusting God. Well, we all have to remember, God does not promise us more beautiful clothing than the flowers. No. What he promises is to provide for the necessities of life. And according to scripture, we are to be content with this. But unfortunately, whether we admit it or not, all of us go through those times when we lack the faith to believe that God has the resources to provide things beyond what we need. So we worry. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and, and the basic cause of worry, and like Coach has said, like I have said already, is unbelief. Mm -hmm. And it is doubly inexcusable in those of us who read Jesus' promise over and over again. But if we trust Him for our salvation, and I hope we all do, why can't we trust Him for today's food and clothing? When we doubt God's ability to provide for us daily, really, Coach, we are questioning His integrity. 
All right, because we're, we're not believing his word. Yeah. That's the thing. The promises are there. And if we don't believe, uh, have enough faith to believe what he says, then we're saying his word is not true. And, and that does go back on the integrity of God. All right, let's go on to the next practical point, and it says, When we see God providing for the plants, which quickly pass away, we can be assured that He will provide greater things for those whom He has created in His image. Yeah, and, and again, uh, sometimes you just have to step back and, and, and maybe ask yourself some of these, we talked about rhetorical questions a while ago, you know, if you stop and think, and you know, is this true or not? Uh, just ask yourself questions like: First of all, is God able to provide these things? Well, obviously He can, he, because He can do anything. He created it, so uh, He certainly can provide it. Uh, then, something we've already alluded to: Are we more valuable? to him than the plants and the animals. Yes, we are. We've already established that for various reasons. And we, you know, we are so valuable that he bought us with the blood of his son. Uh, is he willing to provide for us? Well, the thing about God is he wants his children to prosper. He tells us that in his word. He wants, wants us to prosper. And will he keep his promises? Uh, absolutely, because he loves us unconditionally. Uh, and so, you know, when you put all that together, you certainly he can provide for us and he will provide for us if we just trust him and have faith in, in, in his promises and in his word. Well, each one of you who are listening are special. And the reason I know that because the Bible says, Coach, that he knitted you in your mother's womb. Mm -hmm. That means that each one of you were created special. And that makes you special above creation. Right. And that's what you need to remember whenever you have doubts like that. And whenever you feel like you're worrying too much, where your concern is smeared into worrying, that, that's how you can kind of check yourself. And that takes us to verse 31, and we're going to combine verse 31 and 32 here this morning. And here we see questions, worry, ask. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. So, with the word so, that he begins verse 31 here, Coach, Jesus began to shift from what not to do to what to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, you know, he says, first of all, do not worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. These are all the temporal earthly things that we've mentioned here before. And he does know, he says, what we need. Uh, and the idea here is that a lot of times what we think we need is not really what God thinks we need. <laughs> and and uh, it's not one of those things that we can't do without, or in many cases, uh, it's something that will cause us to uh, maybe even, even get further away from God. So there are a lot of things that we would like to have. That's not what he's saying, that he's going to provide everybody with what you want. He talks about needs, and God does know what our needs are, uh, whether they're physical or uh, uh, emotional or you know, even spiritual. He knows what we need, and he's going to make all that come together uh, for us. And again, because... He wants us to prosper. He wants us to have a good life, an abundant life, as long as we are following him, what he's directed us to do. You know, we still have to develop that relationship with him, one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship that we are doing what he's asking us to do in his will, and, and then uh, he will provide the things that we need, not necessarily that which we want. Well, here Jesus gave two reasons why it's unacceptable to worry about the necessities of life. Mm -hmm. And the first reason is worrying is unacceptable is because Jesus said, after all these things, uh, for the pagans run after all these things. In other words, the Lord is saying that worrying about material things is pagan behavior, mm -hmm. not Christian behavior. That's the first reason. Mm -hmm. The second reason is Jesus gave to show that worrying was unacceptable was because your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. 
And as children of God, our Father knows everything we need, and what we need are the essentials of life, not the luxuries of life. So knowing our needs, God surely will provide, and if in His grace, He decides to give us more, we should be receive, thankful. be thankful. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah, you know, he's comparing us to, to the pagans. You know, he says they run after all these things. Well, we need to understand that the pagans, uh, they don't, if they don't know God, they don't have the hope that we have. And, and so they try to put their trust in things uh, like we talk about. And those things, as we have said, will fail them in the, in the, in the end. And w without the hope of knowing God and knowing salvation, uh, then they don't have much else to look forward to other than these material things. So that's why he says the pagans run after that. They have no hope in anything else. But as Christians, our hope is, is uh, in Jesus Christ. And uh, we know that, again, the Father will give us what we need, not necessarily what we want. And that takes us right into that third question. And this is a really interesting question because this will really make you think. And if you think too hard on it, it might hurt your head. But the question is this, when you worry, which do you worry about? What might happen or what might not happen? And that's a tough one, Coach. Yeah, it is <laughs> uh, because uh, there's no right or wrong answer to, to nope. it there. You know, a lot of people who worry about what might happen, they're kind of futuristic. They're, they're often looking at the future, oh, what's going to happen in, in the future? And uh, in, in uh, the other people that what might not happen, they're kind of caught in a situation where uh, they uh, are looking for some kind of hope that something will happen but they really don't think it will. Uh, you know, it's like that thing we uh, I said at the beginning, you know, that uh, you worry about it just even though uh, you think that means 90% of it's not going to come true. But it, there's no, like I said, there's no right or wrong here to it. But we do need to understand that, as, as, as you have mentioned, it worry as God is concerned is sin. Yeah. And uh, whichever ever way you're worrying, because it denies the wisdom of God, it basically says he doesn't know what he's doing And uh, when we worry like that. It also denies the love of God, because it's basically saying that we don't think he cares about us. And it also denies the power of God, which we say are saying that he doesn't have the ability to deliver these things that we need. So it really is a slap in God's face no matter which way you go with this. Yeah, it really is. You talk about <clears throat> what might happen or what might not happen, and it, it really depends on what your faith level is here because some people have such little faith, Coach, that whichever one of these situations gives them the best opportunity to mm -hmm. worry, they're going to do it. All right. So it's probably a mix of whatever gives them the, the path of least resistance to a state mm -hmm. of being worried. All right. <laughs> and that takes us to our next practical point. It's foolish to worry about material things because God already knows what we need. Yeah, this just kind of summarizes some of the things we've been talking about. Again, notice again, the key word there is needs and not wants. Uh, but that's where a lot of people get tied up and they think that the, what they want is also what they need. And when they don't get it, that's when they start to worry about things. You know, uh, not everybody, you know, uh, when they start worrying about, you know, like buying a house or whatever, they may not get that mansion they want, you know, but they think they need it. And so they they begin to worry about how money situations and a lot of worry comes in there because they're not realizing that God's going to provide what they need. But again, and you mentioned this earlier, this is not something saying that God already knows what we need, so I'm just going to sit back and wait for it. <laughs> uh, you know, God still expects us to work and, and take care of the things that we uh, are part of, of, of our needs. And uh, even, even Paul said that uh, a man who doesn't work should not eat. Uh, that was one of his, his statements. So uh, we are to still carry on with our, uh, get our give our uh, 
best efforts to bring in what we need. But God, the more we trust God, the more we follow his leadership, the more he's going to provide as well. And uh, so it, it ends up being a, a bonus because he wants to bless us, the Bible says, abundantly. You know, he doesn't say he just wants to bless us to, so we get by. He wants to give us uh, an abundant uh, blessing. So, you know, it, it is foolish to, to worry about these other things because they're not important, uh, not really in the grand scheme of things, right. you know. We, we, tend not to, we tend to look in the, the here and not worry too much about the hereafter, right. which is the most important. So, uh, so, yeah, it is foolish. Well, most people, Coach, just want to be happy <clears throat> when, it, when it comes down to it. And, an old man was asked what had robbed him of joy the most in his lifetime. And he replied, things that never happened. Mm -hmm. It seems like that's the biggest robber of joy in somebody's life. And someone has cited these three keys to happiness. The first one is, fret not. God loves you. The second one is, faint not. God holds you. And the third one is, fear not. God keeps you. Those three things uh, would be really, really helpful whenever you're facing these uncertainties in life that we all deal with. Absolutely. And that takes us to verse 33. And here we see replacing worry with faith, which is what Jesus wants us to do anyways. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So in contrast to the one who worries unduly, is the person who seeks first the kingdom of God. Right, that's the key, this, this is the key verse, uh, one of the key verses in all the Bible. Yep. Uh, you know, for, for happiness, for uh, to get rid of worry and anxiety, if we are truly seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness, now that's, that's a, a big step right there for a lot of people. Because that means you do turn your life over to Christ and you follow what his will is for your life. And too many of us are control freaks and we don't want to do that. So uh, that's hard. That's, that's the first step, but it's a hard step. And, uh, but we are to seek, if we're truly trying to, to live for his kingdom and build his kingdom and be a part of his kingdom, then we are doing this because we want to be right with God, which is what righteousness means. And uh, we have to, to be covered by his righteousness because we have no righteousness of our own. And uh, our, you know, our righteousness, uh, the Bible tells us, uh, to God is like filthy rags. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we have to have uh, salvation or agree to accept the salvation through Christ. And that, then those rags, or those uh, filthy rags are turned into rags that are, or robes that are white as snow. And then once we are, if you're really seeking his kingdom and trying to be right with God, then all these other things we've been talking about, the peace and the, you know, the not, not worrying and not being anxious, those kind of things are going to be added just simply because you're seeking God. And that's, that's the key to all of it. Well, there's a, there's a little word there that you mentioned about seven or eight times in what you were talking about, mm -hmm. and that word seek. Mm -hmm. And if you look really deep into that word seek, it, it's a little more than what you see at face value there. This is actually listed in the present tense. Mm -hmm. and, and that indicates that we are to keep on seeking and not only keep on seeking, but expecting. So right. we're, we're to be expecting as we are seeking. And the truth is that if we make our priorities the things that matter to God, He will faithfully supply the material necessities to help us continue to seek His kingdom. And that takes us to our very last verse here this morning, Coach. And it says... Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And how many times over the years have we heard that quoted? But Jesus' closing remarks remind us again that God is in control of the future, over which we have much less, if any, power. Yeah, and, and again, there's the do not worry about tomorrow. 
Uh, and, and the idea is, is I look, uh, look at this as when God is giving us grace to live through a day, we need to understand that God gives us grace for that day. Yep. He doesn't promise you're going to have any left over for tomorrow. Uh, that, that'll be a new day itself. It's kind of like when the Israelites were wandering in the, in the wilderness and God was giving them manna to eat. Uh, if you remember the, the manna, he told them when you, when you get the manna, you take enough manna for that one day and then he would provide more for the next day. But you, for those that decided, well, I'm going to store up so I don't have to, so I can rest tomorrow and not have to go out and get pick up the manna. That didn't end well. <laughs> no, it ended up all spoiling. And that's kind of what happens. You know, if, if you, uh, like I said, God gives us enough grace for today. And if you start thinking about and worrying about tomorrow, that grace hasn't been given to you yet. And it's going to spoil your day, just like the extra manna did. So, uh, and the last thing there, it says each day has enough trouble of its own. And, and truly it does. You know, we, we take it a day at a time and we give each day to God and, and let him take care of it for us. You know, so we don't have to worry about it. God's got it taken care of because he's already planned ahead what's go what he wants to happen to you. Well, Jesus uh, was not suggesting that we shouldn't make plans for the future. Here. No. That's not what he's saying at all. The Bible doesn't condemn planning ahead, for it's mm -hmm. wise to do that. But worrying about the things we can't control shows a lack of trust mm -hmm. in God to provide for us daily. And here's one of the key things of this whole lesson, I think, Coach. Worrying about things we can't control will also rob us of a productive and God-honoring life. In other words, your relationship with God isn't near what it could be when worrying's a part of your being. Sure. And there's plenty to concern ourselves with today without worrying about the, what tomorrow may bring. All worrying does is burden us with the concerns we can't do anything about. And our focus should be on serving God today and not on what might or might not happen tomorrow. And that takes us to our last practical point. And it says, God will provide for us if we give His righteousness priority. Well, again, that's that's the the key to uh, to what we've been saying concerning the worry and the anxiousness and uh, and everything else. Uh, it says if we give His righteousness priority, as I said before, uh, you know the Bible tells us there are none righteous. Then nobody has their own righteousness, nor can they get their own righteousness. We can only get God's righteousness by trying again to follow his lead and do his bidding in our lives. So if we are doing that, God promises that he will, he will not only provide, but he will give us more than what we ask for uh, and more than what we need. So it, it all boils down to, to a few very simple points one of which is number one is we have to do what God's called it to, called us to do, starting with accepting His Son, and then we just simply learn to to uh, build our faith and and trust God and start looking for how, what He wants us to do and what His plan is for our life. And the more we get into His will for our life, the more He's able to bless us because we're doing what He wants done. When we focus on spiritual values, putting God's kingdom and righteousness first, we don't have to be concerned about earthly needs. Right. We won't care near as much. Right. And that takes us to our thought to remember, which will be our final thought here this morning. And it is this. Worry empties today of its strength. And Coach, could you... Take that thought to remember and, and wrap it up and just kind of uh, as we close it up here today. Sure. Uh, you know, we've already stated several times that worry is physically unhealthy for us and it's spiritually unhealthy, we've found now. So uh, whatever strength that we need for today that God is going to give us, worry kind of waters it down or takes, takes it away. Because that just shows we have a lack of trust again in God. And uh, so 
uh, that that's a, a very good way to to uh, uh, ex explain kind of what our lesson has been about. So uh, when we are focusing on spiritual values, which is what we're talking about here with finding the righteousness of God, we don't we won't be so concerned with earthly needs. Uh, the spiritual values become much, much more important to us. And then, as we've said, God will take care of the other things that, that we need. And we can see that through, throughout the, the Bible, and, and we see it in our, our own lives. When, when we start to worry and start thinking about, well, what if this happens? Or, uh, you know, what if this doesn't happen, as we talked about? That just takes away our power to live or takes away our happiness, our peace, uh, all that's gone. Uh, so we need to realize God will supply all these things and we're still going to have challenges. But uh, again, God's going to help us through them. Because we have a Heavenly Father who cares for each one of us, He just asks us to trust Him. And, and that's, that's what it's all about as far as being a, a Christian and then the peace and the lack of worry is, is, is a byproduct of that. If, again, if we give our lives over to God. And again, that's a very, a very easy thing to do for any of you that have not done that already. God just simply asks that you accept his gift uh, of the death of his son, which paid the price for your sins. And it is a gift. You don't have to pay, buy anything. You don't have to... Uh, do anything to gain it. it you just have to accept his gift and then you start working on the life your spiritual life to get to the point where you're totally trusting in God and don't you know don't get get the idea that Mike or I think that we're we've got it figured out that we have got it whipped that we don't worry anymore because that is not true but we just try to get as close as we can to God and let let it go from there well, and if you're watching here this morning, wherever you may be in the world, we, we have no idea, but we're, we're grateful for you viewing. Uh, and you would like to, you know, if you have questions about how to place your trust in Jesus Christ or how to accept him as Lord and Savior, we would love to, to walk you through that process. Matter of fact, we recommend you do that right now, uh, that you would reach out to us here at the church. Again, this is Pine Grove Baptist Church in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Or if you have any questions about anything that we talked about, we would love to have a discussion with you. Feel free to reach out to us here at the church. For those of you who, who watch week to week, or maybe this is your very first time, we would encourage you to share this message with your friends uh, on Facebook or YouTube or whatever social media platform you use to communicate. It just gets the word out. And we thank each one of you for making us part of your day. We certainly uh, don't take this for granted, and uh, we certainly appreciate your viewing every week. Next week, uh, the title of our lesson is going to be Delivered from Fear, and it's going to be in the book of Matthew. So until next time, this is Mike Cornell along with Coach Ron Lathy and our production manager, John Ayers, wishing everybody have a blessed week, and we hope to see you real soon.